Hey everyone, my name is Cygnus, and welcome back to Create Astral. So, in the last episode, we set up some basic automation. I say basic, it's pretty complicated if you don't know what you're looking at with Create, but it's very simple. It's essentially just an automated way to generate very large quantities of rubber from an automated rubber form, which I should probably make a little more efficient. There's not a lot of saplings here. The most important part is it does generate automatically and I solved my little issue with filtering with the sticks and saplings not having anywhere to go by just adding two little packages with andesite belt funnels pulling off of the belt over onto the packages. And this means we now have 175 rubber which is two and almost three stacks of rubber which I think is pretty good especially considering we don't have a lot of uses for rubber just yet until we get a little deeper into automation. So that's actually what we're doing today. We're going to be creating a form of automatic lava generation using cauldrons, dripstone, copper pipes, and well, a drill. Now, this is gonna be pretty simple. I'm going to create a little area back here that's going to house my lava generator. And the lava generator is going to be a 10 by 10 by 100, you heard that right, 100 deep hole that I'm going to fill with lava using a couple mechanisms from Create. First and foremost, if you put lava over a block that has a dripstone underneath it, or a dripstone stalagmite, or uh, stalactite, I guess, because it's hanging from... Anyways, if you put lava above that, it's going to drip down little droplets of lava, and you think, oh, well, that's not useful because droplets have never done anything in Minecraft, right? So if you've thought that, well, you've clearly never left a cauldron out in the rain before because it will start to fill up. And that includes with lava. If we put a dripstone underneath lava and then a cauldron underneath the dripstone, it's going to drip down lava into the cauldron, which is going to result in filling the cauldron with lava at zero cost. And there's a little drown back there. What are you doing? It doesn't have a trident, so don't really care. This means that the cauldrons will eventually fill with lava and cauldrons are able to be connected to hose pulleys from Create, meaning we could create a little contraption where there's fluids being pulled from these cauldrons as they fill and drop down into a hole, specifically using a hose pulley and some mechanical pipes. If we actually go over here, we can see some of the things we're going to need, like the mechanical pump, and later on, we may need a spout, but we're probably going to just use the what's called a hose pulley, which if you've ever seen that, looks like this, and it works pretty simply. It either fills or drains large bodies of fluids. In this case, we're going to be filling because we're going to be putting an input onto it rather than pulling it out. And it all depends on the direction that the cog that's attached to it is spinning. But this is just going to slowly fill up our massive hole. And as it fills, the hose pulley will raise up and eventually just will have a massive hole filled. And as we know, from this little section, you can generate infinite lava if you have at least 10,000 blocks of lava in an area. And guess how many blocks is in a 10 by 10 by 100 area? Well, if you do the math, 10,000. In fact, it's almost exactly 10,000, which is why we're actually going to do a little bit more just in case something happens or, you know, like there's any problems with it and we should go to bed. But we're going to need to do that, and we're also going to need to get a lot of iron because, unfortunately, having that many cauldrons is expensive. It's going to take, uh, well, if it's a 10 by 10 hole, and if I want to surround it by, uh, that's going to be 10, 10, 10, 10, 40 cauldrons. It's going to be 40 cauldrons. That is, it's a lot of cauldrons, and that, uh, each cauldron, I think, costs 7? iron one two three four five six so yeah seven iron so yeah seven times 40 is 280 so we're gonna need 280 iron ingots in order to make all of these cauldrons and that's not even counting how much we're going to need for i don't know the 100 drills yeah because if we're doing a 10 by 10 hole i don't want to do it just with our little like nine by nine or our little three by three because that's going to take forever i want to do it with a full 10 by 10 which, uh, that's a lot of resources. So, if we want to do that, there are some steps we need to take first. And the first thing I'm thinking is we need to automate our production of iron and get it as efficient as possible. So, we're going to use some things we've already learned 
before, such as if we go back to, I think it was the Andesite World tab. Yeah, so the Andesite World tab tells us that if you put stone over double compressed Andesite, it increases the likelihood of Andesite dropping. So that will give us a way of generating Andesite, which is good. But more importantly, it also serves as a way of generating stone because, well, lava touching water always generates cobblestone. It doesn't matter. And if we were just occasionally also generating andesite for our eventual infinite generation of andesite alloy, well, that's just a bonus. So we're going to take our cobblestone from that and then we're going to mill or crush it. Well, we're probably going to use a mill because that's cheaper to do. Why are we going to do that? Well, it turns it into gravel. And then if we wash that gravel, it's going to produce flint. Flint is useful. And we can use that to make cobbled deep slate, which is very, very useful by compacting gravel and flint. But more importantly, it has a chance of generating iron nuggets. Those iron nuggets we can then fill out and using a seared melter, we can just start turning those into actual full-fledged iron blocks. It'll be slow, but it's more efficient than going down and mining them because we don't actually have to be here for it to work, which means we can go do some exploring and we need to do that because there's some things we need to go and find. We can start hooking up something like the Seared Melter, or even just finding some other way to turn it into iron blocks, such as with a compactor, which I think we actually can. Let's actually check something. All right, so it does look like our main method here is going to be turning iron nuggets into molten iron, as anything else is gonna make other stuff that we don't wanna make yet, though that does look useful. We'll definitely play around with that. Oh, here's actually something we can do. If we put nine iron nuggets into a basin, it's gonna automatically pack it into an iron ingot. We put those into a basin with a presser and then suddenly we have iron blocks. So we can do that as the chain of operations once we have the iron nuggets. So first and foremost, we need to set up a little stone generator over here with an automatic mining system that will take whatever we're generating here and just use it. Now, I do need to test something because I haven't properly tested this. Do drills work if you're just spinning them? And I don't mean like moving them around like we did before, but just rotating them in circles because if they do, then it's going to be incredibly easy for us to just attach a portable storage interface and not have to worry about losing any of the resources that actually pop off of this thing. Because currently attaching any sort of like storage output to blocks that are just being dropped by the drill isn't going to be super efficient because, well, the lava's, the lava's going to eat some of those and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and test this. We're going to attach this to a cog wheel and we're just going to see, does it start breaking the cobblestone without anything happening? Oh, well, that's not the right way. Let's actually, uh, we need to attach it to something that's spinning. Hmm. We can just build something real fast. That's no big deal. Okay gonna attach it to a mechanical chassis. Let's make a mechanical bearing real fast and see if this is going to work because I haven't actually tested this. We need an andesite casing and then we'll be good. So let's get a log. All right. And andesite, there we go. And we craft this just like that. There we go. Okay, we have our mechanical bearing and we're going to attach to it a mechanical drill and then we're going to see if it's breaking cobblestone just when the mechanical bearing is directed toward that. So do that, then that, rotational energy is going, and then we right click it with an open hand. Does it start to break this? No. So we need some way for it to push forward and then back on its own without any sort of input. So how can we do that? Let's turn this off, break these. So I can think of one way we might wanna do that, and it would be with a very short mechanical piston and a simple redstone pulse that automatically pulls it back once it detects that the block in front of it is gone. So there's a couple of ways we could do that, or we could just probably work around it. But I would like to do it that way, but we would need nether quartz because I would need to get an observer and then a redstone pulse because I would need to detect for when the block is gone and then when it turns back on so it pushes out because it would push out when the observer goes off the first time triggering it and then it would pull back and stay there uh, when the observer detects that the block is gone and then back and forth and back and forth and yeah you get it so we would need to get nether quartz and is there an easy way to get that right now let's see so if we mill 
diorite. We are going to get nether quartz. Great. We have two diorite right here and we have a millstone that we can just chuck something into and see if we get it. And hopefully it's not processing any rubber right now. Nope, not processing anything. Let's throw those in. And it's going to pop out over here and we're just going to pick them up immediately before it actually processes those fully. No, I didn't check it, but it turns out there's only a 25% chance of that working, so we're going to need more diorite and to try again. Because I didn't get a nether quartz for that, and I kind of need that, so... Okay, we're going to run downstairs and just grab more diorite, because I didn't see any of my... I don't think I have a package full of diorite anymore. I think I actually used up all of it for the floor in there. Yeah, looks like I did. Let's go grab some diorite real fast. We only need a few. We just need it to happen, I think, once because I don't think we're going to need two observers. And I know it's getting late, but I still need to do this, and I don't want to go to bed until this is fixed. I feel like a bird perched up here. Oh, there's another quartz. Amazing. We don't want it to go into there, because I think it'll make something. I mean, statistically, I should get two, right? Though I suppose that's not how statistics work. It just means there's a chance. Oh, still a lot of processing. Oh, well. Let's go to sleep, and then we're going to make an observer, and then start setting this up. It's going to be a very simple contraption. I'm not going to do anything super crazy with it and we also have to be careful to not accidentally light parts of our factory on fire because lava starts fires and we can't turn that off because I'm using hardcore and I don't use any commands in hardcore because I think that would be cheating it would definitely be cheating actually oh yeah by the way if you were ever wondering how I get some of the uh screenshots for my thumbnails I don't actually like do replay mod for most of those I just go out there and build a little pillar over there, I think I took the one for the last episode from up there. And I took a lot of fall damage when I dropped on. You stay in there. Okay, so we're going to make an observer, and I need to grab my redstone, and then we can set up the drill contraption. I'll need to get lava and water and set up a little cobblestone generator over top a andesite, which shouldn't be too hard. I think I have a compressed andesite somewhere. Somewhere. I do not, but I can definitely just make one. It's not like they're super expensive. And then we will need our sticky mechanical piston. What else do I need? Redstone, I have the cobblestone. Let's go ahead and make a observer. Which I think, I don't even need to look this up because I've made tons of observers before, totally. I do lots of redstone all the time. I got it right the first time, that's amazing. And this doesn't need to do anything fancy, it just needs to see it. And then we can need to compress andesite which should be able to do that. Just made seven, I don't need seven. Okay, andesite world, yeah. Okay, I need, let's equip my helmet, and I definitely need a bucket of lava and a bucket of water. Do I have either of those stored away? Okay, I had a bucket of lava in my ore chest, but not a bucket of water. Oh wait, it's right there, hiding. So we're going to set this up in a way that doesn't cause everything to break. So we have to be very careful with the placement of this because the lava will try and spread. So we're going to do it in the floor and I'm going to do it like this. And I can put a hole here. Actually, doing this in the floor is going to be difficult. Uh, no. Okay, let's try this again. Still gonna just do the L, like this. Uh, compressed andesite right there. It's a waste of andesite to do that. And that should work. Let's go and raise this and cover it. That should reduce the likelihood of any fire starting. Let's test this. We start hearing burning. Okay, either way, that's also in the wrong location. The water needs to have the hole, not this. So, the water there. We put this like that, and that's perfect. That's exactly what we need to happen. We break this. We're going to put an observer. And then a mechanical piston with a drill in front of it. And we give it just one shaft. Well, obviously you need to give it rotational energy. So we'll put a... Let's throw a windmill down real fast. Okay, so I ended up settling on a water wheel for now, but the mechanism I had here, I realized there's a fatal flaw because this is going to just emit a single pulse, which is just going to cause this to turn on for like a quarter of a second and then turn back off when the cobblestone spawns. So what I would need to set up is probably some form of T flip-flop, which uh, I don't have enough redstone for that. 
and I would need to go get that. So for now, this is just going to be a manual operation, and it's a little inefficient, but I, I'm sure I could figure something out. There's got to be a better solution than just doing that back and forth like this. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. And I'm going to figure that out here soon. So I'm going to take a few more minutes, look into this, see if there's something I can do, and then I will get back to you with a solution. So I will be right back. So I just remembered, I went mining a couple episodes ago, and I kept trying to remember to tell you guys about this, but I actually ended up finding a mine shaft underneath my base, and I haven't explored it much. I think I went like a few blocks down there, and I have only opened this chest, and there's some activator and detector rails in there which are useful, but I don't need them right now. But I actually came down here to grab more redstone because I have an idea for how to fix the issue that we're running into, and redstone's a good way to go about it. Now, I kind of wish I didn't use all my redstone on my pickaxe, but this will be fine, and I'm going to explore this a little bit to see if I can find some more, or if there's any other valuable resources I can grab down here. Iron is always welcome. And looks like that's kind of all we're going to get without going out into the middle of nowhere and i have explored a little bit out here it looks like i don't remember coming out here but that's fine okay yeah looks like i definitely did a bit of mining here just gonna grab as much redstone as we can and then head back okay that yeah we have two stacks that should be enough yeah i have an idea and it should work for what i'm trying to do okay now it works and yes that is the slowest possible deployer that i can actually make using this windmill and yes, it is relatively inefficient, but more importantly, it's automatic. So what this is going to do is it's going to activate the gear shift. Hmm. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's going to activate the gear shift and send the drill out over here, which is going to break this. And by the wonders of lava touching water, it's going to do that. And then it's going to reach back over and it's going to pull it back. And I could probably speed this up just a little bit by adding more sails to it and that would make it a little bit more efficient. But more importantly, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. So we can start processing out the cobblestone to different areas where it's gonna start making stuff, which means we can proceed with this video because that actually kept me busy for like 30 minutes trying to figure out how to automate pushing a button. But on the bright side, I did make a little bit of an innovation because deployers require the need of polished rose quartz. So I had to get another nether quartz, make it with redstone, and then I had to make sandpaper in order to turn it into polished quartz. And fortunately, making the rubber hand was not expensive, but we are almost out of andesites. We need to get this thing up and going quick, or we're going to run out of resources. So let's get this going. We need to get this to process out cobblestone and then start washing the cobblestone using the fans that we have over there, which shouldn't be too difficult. And then we need it to also filter out the andesite, which the andesite will go into a basin to become part of the process of making andesite compound. And then that will go into our melter. And we may need to continue with the andesite part of this build in the next episode, but for now, let's get this iron operation up and going. All right, so I made a decent chunk of progress, as you can probably tell. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that I have going on here. So. We start at this primary little contraption. Over here we have the little drill actually pushing out and mining the cobblestone right here. And that is powered by a water wheel, which I actually had to make a little stronger. And then it deposits out over to the sand aside funnel, which drops, drops onto this belt. Now this whole thing is powered, of course, by the world's slowest windmill and a deployer that presses a lever to turn this on and off to pull this thing back and forth to make sure it keeps going. And this goes through here, and the andesite that is created is pulled out to this package. And then, all of the cobblestone that isn't the andesite goes into the millstone, and then the millstone deposits gravel. Gravel comes over here, it gets washed. Any gravel that doesn't get washed will just go back into the system, and I can take it out and clear this and deposit it later back into the system if need be. Uh, I intend to make this a bit more efficient, because right now it's kind of slow. If I add more speed to it, it'll reach farther but haven't had a chance to do that just yet. But then the iron nuggets that are washed from the gravel pop out over here. They go all the way down, flint gets deposited, gravel gets deposited, the iron nuggets continue passing. They go into here, this mechanical press presses them when nine of them have appeared in here. 
Then the ingot pops out over here and deposits over on this side. Now we can go ahead and deposit this and hopefully we'll see. Ah, it's just gonna do that, okay. We wanna do a recipe filter. And so it's just going to prioritize making the Excuse you, that was incredibly loud and really close by, wasn't it? Huh. Okay, we should probably sleep. Alright, so where were we? Right. So, this drops down, the belt runs the iron nuggets over into here, and this has a recipe filter now, so it should just... Really? Hmm. I just remembered we don't need that. We can just do that. Right. I completely forgot how basins work. So when the output is finished, it'll just deposit over there. We don't actually need the funnel. So this should go in, and if there's enough in there, it'll process, but there probably won't be. But when enough iron nuggets have gone in there, it will make an iron ingot and spit it out over here which is good. So the only thing we need to do really is speed this up because it's really slow, which shouldn't be too difficult. I can just do a little chain system, but ideally, actually, I'm going to connect this to a entirely different power source because uh, the one that it's currently connected to is incredibly slow. And I'm just going to do that by running a shaft all the way over under this little floor, which honestly is a lot easier than it sounds, and hopefully this contraption won't break. Or I can just add another one of these windmills over here, attach it to this, and increase the speed that way. But I think just adding a shaft underneath here is going to be our best bet. Yeah, that'll, that'll probably work. Could also just do a belt, now that I'm thinking about it. And now I'm just going to do a shaft. All right, and with a little bit of work and a small little underground accelerator that you can see here, we have this fan reaching all the way down the whole row. So now anything that comes through is coming through much quicker. And I should probably put this back because I had to make some more cogs and I didn't have a another mechanical press because uh, I'm a little short for resources right now and I need to definitely get that fixed. And that's partially the purpose of this whole contraption is because I'm running out of stuff at a record pace. But hopefully this should start making sure almost all of the gravel that comes through here is processed. And I should actually probably slow it down. Let's see if we can do that actually. Um if I just take this from further in the system, that should work. Anything in here? No? Okay. Let's see if I can pull this from further in the system before all of the acceleration. We break that. Yep, there's a little cog we can use. Let's do this. And then we need to get this down here, so we're probably gonna do a belt like this. And do I have any more belts? I do, okay. And then, just need to get it, like, uh, over here somehow. Let's actually do it, like, here, and we can just put these back. And no one will know. There we go. Then, belt, and we're good. We can break our way out. That's stairs. Nobody saw that. It's, it's fine. Nobody can see it and put these back. It's going the wrong direct. Oh, wait, no, it's going the right direction, okay. So we slowed that down, so it should be more functional. Now we just gotta put all these blocks back. There we go. Sealed up the hole that we made. That's getting filled up. We still have to put that back. There we go. Okay. So that seals that up, and this system is slower, which means it's more likely to convert stuff into what we need. Because if it was going too fast, then this isn't going to work. And ideally, we would actually just have a whole lot of mechanical fans right here, blowing at this. And so we don't actually need, like, 
one fan going fast, we could have multiple fans going kind of slow. Let's fix this. Do that. We can put an andesite casing on this so we don't have an ugly hole in the floor. Yeah, if you didn't know, you can actually put andesite casings on cogs so that they're not visible from outside. And you can also do it to belts if you don't like how they look or if you want them to be a bit more uh, filled in. Because having just a belt on the ground can look a little gross sometimes. But anyways, this should be good now. And it should be processing. Let's see, do we have we made any more? No, okay. Let's actually take off this recipe filter and see if that works. No, okay. So this still needs some time and it will eventually start processing more iron. But with the iron, we can start making the andesite that we need. And as you can tell, the production of iron nuggets from gravel is not perfect. So we're not going to get it every single time. As much as I would like to. But it is going to produce it every now and then, which means we will have an output of infinite iron. And if we can scale this up or just increase its efficiency, then our problems will pretty much be solved regarding our current situation with iron. I don't like how this looks. So let's actually do a belt like that. And I know it looks basically the same, but it's a bit more organized, I would say. Easier to work with. And yeah, this is our method of producing infinite iron. And coincidentally, it's also going to make a lot of gravel and andesite eventually. It's not super fast with the andesite, but it will eventually make it. And we can speed this up by just adding more of the sails to it. And that will speed the deployer up to maybe a better speed for us. Which should be okay. But yeah, we'll probably add more sails to this and make it a little bit more precise. But I'm just pretty satisfied that we actually... Oh, hey, look! An iron nugget. And here I was worried that it wasn't actually working. Yeah, these are going to go all the way through. Slowly. So incredibly slowly. We can probably speed that up, actually. Uh, I could hook it up to that. That'd be too fast, though. Well, I mean, I suppose that part doesn't need to be slow. Well, I'll figure it out later. But I think that's going to be it for this episode. We've already expanded our factory quite a bit. We have two sides to it, one producing infinite rubber and one producing infinite iron. And the infinite iron is eventually going to extend down behind me into what is going to be our infinite andesite production, which will be right in front of where we're going to do infinite lava. The in infinite andesite production is going to require a bit more though, because we also need to get infinite clay, which I think we can just automate sand. But let's see how we can actually make sand. What's it made out of? So if we okay, that's convenient. If we mill our excess gravel, we can make sand. And with sand, we can make clay. Which means that our whole process can actually get to the point we don't need anything intervening. Like, we don't need anything in the process. We can just have everything going constantly. I think that's pretty good. We won't even need to touch any of our machines. It will, it will just output andesite for us, and if we hook it up to the smelter, or a faucet, rather, one of these things, a spout, on top of a uh, liquid output thing in a in Hephaestus, that little thing, or that one, whichever, and we just let it output and produce ingots and then output the ingots to just a chest or something, then yeah, we'll just have constant output of infinite andesite alloy, which really solves one of our major problems. The only issue is it will cost a lot of our iron, and currently this isn't super efficient, so we do need to find a way to make this better. And I'm sure there are ways. And looking at the automation matrix, yes. There are definitely ways to increase the efficiency of making iron nuggets. And I know one of those ways involves putting stuff over crimsite. So applying lava and flint 
So when we have our infinite lava, and then we have our pretty decent source of flint right here, we can start making crimsite if we put it through a millstone makes iron or a crusher also makes more iron but we can't do crushers yet we're not at that stage because we need brass and we don't have brass but this is looking good and yeah i think that's going to be it for this episode i think i already said that but in the next episode we're going to continue with the andesite automation and hopefully get a little closer to actually you know going to the moon because i want to have a decent automation here on Earth before we get there. And I want to have a bulk load of resources that we'll just never run out of. And this is definitely one way to do that. But until then, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.